So I'm starting out today a, um, a master copy of John Singer Sargent's painting of Leon de la Fosse. And um, I've done a fairly kind of exhaustive search for the best kind of images that I could find that I feel like represented uh, how that painting would appear in life. Um, and even after that, I've done like a series of kind of edits uh, in order to kind of interpret the color into something that to me represented probably the kind of view of that painting and those skin tones in natural light. There's a lot of uh, sort of images that you can find of this particular painting, um, not all of which are kind of photographed under natural light or under the light that was painted in. And so you have these kind of like divergent kind of color ideas being represented and you're not sure like kind of which one to trust. So. Uh, for that reason, I've not gone for one of them. I've gone for a kind of combination of several of them and also intuited some changes that I thought were helping it to kind of reflect its more natural state. I'm going to start out with just kind of the briefest of sketches just to kind of get the head kind of locked into the right position um, and make sure that it kind of fits on my canvas in the way that I want it to. Uh, I'm working today on like just a regular kind of gessoed panel. It's not really anything sophisticated. And in fact, it's not necessarily representative of what I think Sargent would have been working on for this, um, uh, for this painting. Uh, I bring that up because a very interesting and kind of significant part of the copying process is to kind of understand, you know, what it is you want to copy, like why why am I interested in this particular painting by Sargent? And why is it that I find uh, I want to kind of internalize or understand some version of it in order to kind of help me improve? I figure that in a way Sargent works kind of from the middle values out, which is to say that um, the darks that he kind of begins painting with, the shadows that he begins painting with, are not necessarily like the darkest version of what those shadows will be eventually. It's kind of saving those kind of darker accents for the end. And so uh, mixing a lot of kind of yellow into my shadow, uh, I might even mix uh, even just a little bit um, of white, uh, just to make sure that uh, I don't kind of take that bottom edge off the value scale and kind of not leave myself the opportunity to, um, uh, to have some accented values. I'm even going to, like I said, kind of air quite far on the side of, of keeping it lighter. So just kind of comparing this value together to, uh, to kind of pure black, um, just to see, you know, what is the kind of relationship in between those two. And I'm going to start to just kind of dial in some of the major shadow shapes that I see um, in this painting. You know, Sargent was someone who understand kept his color and value so well unified um, really only kind of making changes or dramatic changes precisely where he needed to so I'm really on the lookout here for how different colors and values kind of just blend together right and don't really differentiate themselves from one another You know, as much as possible, keeping that light shape full and unified and letting the, the color and value kind of walk you kind of back and forth across some of those transitions. You can always refer back to some of my highest key lights, though, to see like where some of these colors and values need to be a little bit darker. I had a side plane of the head here, you know, I should have known, I should have been watching that for the possibility of getting a little bit too light. Uh, but I think I got distracted by some of the other color and value I was looking at.
the brushes that I'm using at the moment are all synthetic bristles, all very soft. Most of them are, um, as you can see, kind of filbert shaped. I have uh, one round uh, and I have one flat, actually, the flat being the kind of only exception in terms of kind of not coming to the same point and not being the same brand. These probably for this size of a head are maybe sufficient to what you'll need to kind of render out the subject such as we find it. Capturing really his true intentions in terms of color and value and interrelating the kind of color and value within his face into this sort of black, deep, dark background. For me, that's the thing I'm primarily kind of excited about in this particular copy, um, is that orientation of these kind of darker values seeping into that dark background, embracing that atmosphere of depth, and then the kind of advancing lights of the lighter planes of the face. So just have to make sure I'm responsible enough here and that I get through the entire block in before I start refining things. You know, the thing about blocking in again, of course, is that you've got to take all these choices a second time. And, you know, you can't just kind of block in, you know, really bad color values and then think that uh, later you'll just refine them and they'll turn into something good. Uh, so each step that you take in the journey here is going to be critical to uh, to making a good study. So don't rush it. Just go through it as deliberately as possible. Just slow and deliberate, making sure that you ask the right questions. What is the color? What is the value? What is the intensity? These are all things that simply need to be asked on the way to making a good painting. One of the tricks with the highlight though is you gotta consider what the scale of your painting is, you know, you don't want to make a highlight too big. You know, it's pretty easy to do that too. Too big and it winds up looking cartoonish, and unconvincing, which is kind of the uh, death knell for realism. You really want a um, feeling that this is a very sensitive reflection on, on nature, on light, on the subject, um, all these things. And so try to keep in mind that proportion is really a big part of that. There's not really so many other activities that give you or gift you almost that sense of uh, really studying in solitude the nuances of a subject. So for the artists you admire, the artists who in a way don't want to emulate their, their person or their art, but their understanding of the visual world. You know, take the time to look deeply into what they do and, uh, and study their work.